Amen. Amen. I want to thank you all for joining us. Those of you who are with us live and in living color from coast to coast, I want to welcome you to our latest edition of Mantle Matters, our Faith and Finances webinar. Tonight we are continuing on in our series, Experiencing Entrepreneurship from a Kingdom Perspective. And we're going even deeper than that. Uh, we've been on the topic, what you see is what you get. Um, victory over lack. How, how, to, how to get lack out of your life. Well, you've got to... Um, You've got to see it before you see it. Uh, that, 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 that's what it comes down to. It's critical that you don't name it and claim it. See, that, that, that's where Christians have gone wrong. Christians have gotten into this name it and claim it thing, and they haven't taken it all the way. They haven't taken the word all the way. They confess it with their mouths, but they don't believe it in their hearts. Why don't they believe it in their hearts? Because if you believe it in your heart, you will see it with the eyes of your heart. You'll be able to visualize what it is you're confessing, and it's a whole lot easier to confess what you see than to confess what you don't see. The Word tells us to... to um, Call things out as though they were. But in order to call it out, you better see it out to be able to call it out. Uh, that may have been where the disciples went wrong when it came down to healing the, the little boy with uh, epilepsy. Uh, he was throwing himself into, into the fire, and his father didn't know what to do with him. Took him to the disciples. The disciples laid hands on him and tried to heal him and couldn't. And along comes Jesus, and this frustrated father said, your disciples couldn't heal, heal my boy. Please, please heal my son. And Jesus, probably looking at his disciples with some disdain, he said, what am I going to do with this generation? He was speaking of his own disciples. And he was able to see this boy healed. And he made him healed by just a word and a touch. Something his disciples at the end of that wonderful healing, uh, as they stole away together, you can imagine his disciples coming to Jesus, where, where do we blow it? Where do we miss it? How did you do it? And Jesus said, some things don't come out except by prayer and fasting. And prayer and fasting has to be part of your lifestyle. Not situationally only, but as a part of, not ritualistically, but a part of your living. Yeah. A part of your living. To be able to visualize victory, you've got to be, you've got to know that your spirit is more supreme than the supremacy of anybody's flesh. There you go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of talk today. Um, given the factions and the tribalism that is running rampant in our society today, um, I'm sure that is true globally, but it's especially true right here at home in these United States as we prepare to go into a season where I'm sure your television screens and mine are being bombarded by political ads of folk demonizing other folk running for public office. Um, and a lot of stuff isn't even true. But people are at each other's throats. So with all of this demonization of people and, and um, uh, racism raising its ugly head uh, and coming out of the, the woodwork, perhaps like we haven't seen in decades, we need to be reminded today that uh, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. In other words, let me put it to you this way. Let me make it plain. The superior spirit that resides in you if you are Christ. Mm -hmm. The superior spirit at work in you is greater than any uh, claim of superior flesh working against you. The superiority of, of, of others' flesh will not have victory over the supreme superiority of the spirit at work in you. Mm. No weapon formed Thank against you, you or I shall prosper. Sometimes we need to be reminded of that because the threats mm -hmm. are coming out of the woodwork. Yes. The threats are coming out as bold as it's been probably since before the civil rights movement. Hallelujah. So we need to be mindful 
and take comfort in the fact that we are the Lord's. We are the Lord's, and we have the Lord on our side. But guess what? We will choose the outcome we will get based upon the choices we make today. That leads us into our word today. Choose. Choose. You choose your own reality. Choose this day whom you will serve, part two. (laughs) We went through part one last week, and uh, we're, we're keeping... In with this theme of of a liberty from lack, liberty from lack. What you see is what you get. Well, uh, what you see is what you get, but you're not going to get it until you choose to see something different than you're giving your attention to. Let's go before the Lord and pray. In Father God, we thank you and we praise you for this time, Lord God, this chosen time. This time, Lord God, that you've assembled us from around the country and by YouTube video on demand, even from around the world. God, we give you great glory and great praise that we have this blessed opportunity not to meet at a church down the street, down the block, around the corner, but we can meet with a church with no walls, a church with no boundaries, a church with no limits. We can be the people of your high calling by operating out of the confines of a building and of a structure, that we could meet under the anointing of the Holy Spirit without limits at all. God, we thank you, Lord God, that that this is your body of believers, a church that consists of people from coast to coast and all points and places in between. Only you could pull off such a thing, and we give you praise and glory tonight. Now tonight, honor yourself, glorify yourself by the word that comes forth. Lord God, I make myself available to you. Lord God, we open up our hearts to your word. Lord God, we open up our minds. We roll away the stone of our disbelief, of our doubt, that we might receive the full implantation of the seed of your word tonight, that we might get it as we've never gotten it before, so much so that we could visualize and see what was blind to us just moments before. Lord God, I pray that you would give us the ability to visualize our victory as we've never had before. Let it be part of our practice and our living, that just as our minds see and concentrate on certain things that comes and grabs its attention, that our, our mind's eye, our heart's eye, the eyes of our spirit would gravitate towards the things of God, that the things of God may be plain to us like never before, that we might receive the things of God, the benefits of sonship, the benefits of being your daughters, the benefits, oh God, of being your children. Oh God, we thank you and we praise you that we have access to the king and the fullness of the wealth of your kingdom. God, we thank you and we praise you that being broke, busted, and disgusted may have, may have been a part of our past, but it is no way a part of our present and certainly has no impact on what our future holds because you lay our future out before us starkly and directly. We thank you, Lord God, from the visions that we receive and get from the word that you encourage us with out of Isaiah chapter 60. All of that lies ahead of us if we just stick with your ways, stick with your word, and be blessed, obedient children to a father who fails us not. Mm -hmm. We thank you and we praise you, God. Now, have your way, Holy Spirit. Think with my mind and speak with my mouth those truths that you would have us all, not only to know, but to do, that we may be imitators of the Christ who gave us life. Oh, God, we thank you and we praise you today for all that you're about to do, for all that you've done already to this point. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. I want you to get out your word and turn with me to Joshua chapter 24. We're going to just uh, look at this again. We're going to glance at this again because this is a word that we cannot let go of. Remember, you have a choice insofar as what reality you live 
<laughs> yeah, you can be satisfied with staying in the reality that's been presented to you. Or you can envision a brand new reality as the word of God gives you guidance, gives you direction. Let you visualize what it is the word of God says you already have as blood-bought children, sons and daughters of 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 our God, God the Father. We are we have a big brother who shows us the way in Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Turn with me to Joshua chapter 24. We're going to begin at verse 14 and it reads, "Now therefore fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in faithfulness." I want to read that one more time because this harkens, harkens uh, also to a word that came much later in the New Testament to serve the Lord in spirit and in what? Truth. Truth. Listen, listen. Now, therefore, fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in faithfulness. Hmm. Put away the gods that your fathers served beyond the river and in Egypt and serve the Lord. Hmm. In other words... I've taken you out of bondage. Stop living as bound people. Put away the practices that once governed you while you were slaves in a foreign land. Mm -hmm. I brought you into the promised land. Can't you see it? <laughs> what you see deserves a different, different response from the way that you used to live and the way that things looked then. You've got to see things differently today because perspective matters. Either you're going to have to take the perspective of a slave and bring it into your free promised land and live as a slave even where you've been set free. Or you're going to live completely redeemed, having just a faint memory of the past that once was a part of your life. You choose your reality, the reality of being a redeemed man or woman in Christ or still enslaved to the flesh and the devil. Ah, now listen, put away the gods that your father served beyond the river and in Egypt and serve the Lord. And, verse 15, and if it is evil in your eyes to serve the Lord. Stop, wait a minute, hold the phone. Listen to what Joshua says under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And if it is evil in your what? Eyes oh. to serve the Lord. Ah, the, the eyes are the light of the soul. Mm. If it is evil in your eyes to serve the Lord, then you're going to be blind to what serving the Lord can bring. You're going to miss it. If it's evil in your eyes, everything starts with a look. A look is what it takes to stimulate the mind to even have a thought. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's why we have to be careful of what our eyes, we allow our eyes to take in. Because once our eyes start taking in things, it becomes a thought. And a thought is a seed that then turns into action and activity. Exactly. And that action and activity will either be in conflict with the activity of the Holy Spirit or it will be in conflict with the activity that, of the Holy Spirit that he would have you acting on his behalf. Moving in his power. Ah, it all starts with the eyes. Listen, listen, listen. And if it is evil in your eyes to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve. Check that out. All right? The choice comes if you think that serving the Lord is evil, then choose. <laughs> then choose what it is you're going to do. Choose this day. Whom you will serve, whether the gods your fathers served in the region beyond the river. In other words, in that old land that we were brought out of. Or 
the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. You had gods that you were serving in your old place, and there's gods available for you to serve in this new place. But as far as me, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And what Joshua is suggesting is that for him and his house, there is no choice. <laughs> there is no choice. I'm making my choice to the Lord, and there is no other choice available to me. Because I am I'm deaf, blind, and ignorant to the gods that I could serve. I, my focus, my attention, my eyes are fixated on the God that I'm serving and that has served me well all of this time. Choose this day whom you will serve. In other words, Joshua, Joshua is suggesting, he's implying that who you choose to serve will impact what your life will be like, what your destiny will be. That choice will impact your reality. Choose the reality that you want to live. What that means is you can disassociate yourself with the reality that you've grown comfortable with. Mm. <laughs> A reality that may be governed by lack, mm. may be governed by pain, heartache, heartbreak, all kinds of negativity could have such so captured your imagination that that is all your mind's eye can take in or see. It is fixated on loss, fixated on lack, rather than seeing a whole new reality. Choose your reality. Choose whom you serve. By doing so, you will choose your reality. Here's where we get disconnected from the whole idea of being kingdom. Because if we're connected really to the king, we would see the king meeting all of our needs as we serve the king and his kingdom. Why? Because as Sister Denise Forbes has been teaching us through the months, that there is a direct association with the business of the kingdom meeting the needs of its kingdom citizens. You've got to know how the kingdom works. The kingdom government is set up uh, to uh, not only serve the king, but for the king and his kingdom to serve those who are serving the king and his kingdom. Yes, yes. That's why people stay within the borders and the confines of the kingdom in the first place. They've got a good king who takes care of them. A good king will protect you against foreign invaders and intruders. A good king will provide for his people. A good king will make good laws that fairly govern the activities of the citizens of his kingdom. A good king has an economy that he calls a commonwealth. We're all sharing in this thing. You share in the abundance of the king and of the king's kingdom. And if the king isn't broke, busted, and disgusted, what are you doing broke, busted, and disgusted as one of his citizens? Mm -mm -mm. Bamboozle. Whoa! You must be leasing space in the kingdom rather than being all in. <laughs> huh? <laughs> are you just visiting? Are you here on a green card? Or are you... A citizen. You know, there are permanent residents. There are folks who have visas just to visit for a particular time and reason. And there, there are folks who are all in. They were born in the confines of the kingdom, and it is there where they stay and remain. They recognize themselves as citizens of the kingdom, and they've got certain expectations of the king and of the kingdom, and the king and the kingdom has certain expectations of the citizens. There is no detachment from uh, kingdom as we know it by way of the world's kingdoms. <clears throat> the world has just been ordered, if you will, after the kingdom of God. It's just got the whole order twisted. Ah, yes, indeed. It's stolen from the economy of the king. 
and his kingdom. It's stolen from the laws of the king and his kingdom. It's stolen from the military aspects of the king and his kingdom. That's good. But it's got it twisted. Mm. <clears throat> and because the kingdoms of this world are twisted, is it should it be odd or peculiar that the people living by the standards of the kingdom of this world and its king, who is the devil, would be themselves twisted and caught up? And we're called in this New Testament era to beware of people who are caught up. We're called to take stock of those that we put stock in. We need to be careful that we come out of the kingdoms of this world, detach ourselves from those things that fail us, and make sure that we're connected to the king and his kingdom, which is incapable of failure much less failing you. Do we trust him enough? It really comes down to that. Do we trust in the word of God? Choose this day whom you will serve. Choose your reality. Your reality is a choice. You don't like the reality of your living? Then make a decision. Mm -hmm. Choose this day a different reality and begin to see it in your mind's eye. See what the Lord is saying about the reality he has for you. And what reality is that? Well, it harkens back to the reality he had when he first created mankind. Right back to Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 through 28. You've been blessed of the Lord to be fruitful, to multiply, to, uh, to fill the earth, to subdue it. And to have dominion. That's the reality that God put on mankind when he created mankind. And that's the reality that we've been separated from since the great fall. Jesus came to reassert and reconnect us back to a reality that most of us have not lived yet. But the beautiful thing about it is no matter what your reality has been and no matter what your reality is today, if it's differentiated in any way from the reality that, that, that the Lord called into effect to affect us as long as we were working in cahoots with him, then guess what? You have every right as a blood-bought citizen of the king and his kingdom to begin to fashion a brand new reality out of the one that you've grown comfortable with. That's right. You need to start seeing that reality, and then that reality will become real. Well, Pastor, you, you, it sounds like you're, you're, you're encouraging us to fantasize. No, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm encouraging you to imagine. Imagine. There you go. <laughs> that's, what I'm, I'm, that's what I'm encouraging you to do. I'm encouraging you to imagine. Because what does the Lord say in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9? No eye has seen, no ear heard, nor has it entered into the imagination of man. The good things, the good things, the good things mm -hmm. that God has prepared. That means past yeah. tense. His work yeah. of preparation for you and for I has already been done. No eye nor ear has heard, nor has it entered into the imagination of man, the good things that God has prepared for those who what? Love him. Love There's the qualifier. Him. Those who love him. And how? Wh what is God's love language where loving him is concerned? Well, how does God feel and receive love from you and I? It's when we're obedient. <laughs> obedient. When we do his word and what his word says, we will get what his word says we will get. <laughs> and the getting is mighty good in his kingdom. He lays it all out for us in Deuteronomy. Do believe it's chapter 28. The first 15 verses, he lays out the blessings for obedience. And you're blessed in the city. You're blessed in the field. You're blessed when you're going in, blessed when you're coming out. <laughs> Your, your hands will be blessed. Your, your baskets will be blessed. Your work will be blessed. Everything you touch and everywhere you go will be blessed. And then from, I do believe it's verse 16 until the end of chapter 28, he lays out consequences for disobedience. And they are in direct contrast to the blessings that come with obedience. Look, there is 
There is abundance, exceeding abundance attached to obeying the word of God. That's why the real test for discipleship is, will we do what the Lord says for us to do? Then we'll get what he's promised we'll get. When we get all in with that, when we begin to think and imagine ourselves being obedient to the word, ooh, I can't do that, I can't. You know what, one of the biggest things that I was hung up on as a Christian, this is before I got kingdom, okay? <laughs> uh, I was saved a long time before I got kingdom. <laughs> do not be confused between being Christian and being kingdom. Yeah, true that. Woo. Do not be confused. One does not necessarily look like the other, okay? <laughs> Let's get that one straight right there. But one of the biggest things I had hang-ups for me as a Christian was God said, be holy as I'm holy. My first thought is there is no way in the world I can be holy, God. Especially holy like you're holy, I can't do it. So guess what? My my tries or attempts at being holy were very limited. <laughs> it was limited because of what I could not see myself doing or being. Yeah. The breakthrough came when I began to imagine that, number one, the, the work of holiness isn't up to me to do. It's up to me to be. And guess who did it for me? Jesus. It's not, I don't bring any holiness to the table. He brings the holiness, credit it, credit it to my account, and ask me just to live in his power. And once you begin to imagine yourself living in the power of God, the Holy Spirit in you, at work in you, he releases his work through you. Yeah, 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 true. You've got to be able to see yourself doing what Jesus did. Because Jesus called us out as his disciples. He said, greater things than these you will do. Not only will you do the things that I've done, but greater things than these you will do. Has it ever occurred to your mind? Has it ever occurred to your imagination to begin to think beyond the limits of your flesh and see yourself doing what Jesus did while he was on the earth? I'd have been one popular brother in college had I tried to turn water into wine to keep a party going on Howard University's campus. <laughs> let, me, let me just say that as an aside, okay? But seriously, though, we need to be able to visualize our victory. We need to be able to see it before we see it. See, we get stuck on stupid when we get locked in to the stresses and the demands that are placed upon us in this life. What gets our attention? The stresses and the demands rather than the victory that's just ahead of the stresses and the demands. Look, look at it this way. God will never allow you to go through anything that you cannot handle. So whatever it is you're going through, if it's being characterized by lack, characterized by a health challenge, characterized by heartbreak, whatever it is, whatever your issue is, whatever your stony place might look like, God is saying, look at the stone removed. See your tomb being emptied and you no longer in it. Start seeing a different reality than the one that you have accepted. Start seeing yourself and others that you pray and intercede for. Start seeing them well. Start seeing them healed. Start seeing them whole. Start seeing them delivered. And when your mind starts to visualize their actual redemption, guess what? <laughs> their redemption is nigh because it's already been done 2,000 years ago. In order for you to bring out of what was already done in the spirit realm, because when Jesus went to the cross, that was a physical thing. But your redemption came when he, his spirit left his body and the real work of Calvary began in the pit of hell. Yes, mm. When he took the keys right from the devil, 
and shut the devil's mouth, dis disembowel the devil, if you will, where the devil could only shoot blanks. He could howl, he could huff, he could puff, but there was no teeth to back up his taunts. But well, we've been given a greater taunt. We could taunt him with the word of the living God. And Satan has no reply except to pack up and run and flee. We've got power over him. But you've got to see yourself above him. The Lord says that he's putting all things under his feet so that all things would also be put under ours. Are you seeing those things under your feet that once were held over your head? We're called to be the head and not the tail. Are you seeing yourself as the head? Even though the circumstances all around you will suggest to your natural eye, brother, sister, you're still the tail. But until you start seeing yourself as the head, tail is all you're going to ever be. We've got to envision and visualize a whole new reality. Yep. Before we can call things into being that are not, we've got to see things into being that we couldn't. Uh, this is the secret and hidden wisdom of God. Mm -hmm. That though the word of God says no eye has seen, no eye has, no ear has heard, nor has it entered into the imagination of man the good things that God has prepared for those who love him, that does not mean that we, uh, that it should become unfamiliar territory for us. He's summoning us to, though you haven't been there before, though you haven't seen this way before, though you haven't heard these things before, though you haven't imagined what I've imagined for you before, come up to my level yes. and start seeing with my eyes and from my perspective what I've already prepared for you. Mm -hmm. And know that it mm -hmm. is for you. Yes. Ah, there, there, there's the freedom right there. Know that I've already prepared it for you. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, you know, we're so used to getting bad stuff that, that somebody gives us a good gift and is that for me? Huh? Is that for me? I, I, I don't deserve that. Is, is, is that for me? And God is saying, yeah, I prepared it for you. It's got your name on it. Yes, indeed. We need to start seeing ourselves as worthy recipients of what Jesus died and rose again to give to you and I. Hmm. We're, not, we're not worthy on our merits. We're worthy on his. His work was notorious. Our work is notorious. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The work that mm -hmm. Jesus did was meritorious for him, and he gave that merit and credited his merit to our account, which makes us righteous in our Father's eyes. Because all that we could ever do, even on our best self-righteous day, we're still notorious sinners. But for the work of Jesus. This is the separating stone, if you will, from us leaving the false pretenses of what we've been taught in our past as good Christians to becoming good citizens of the kingdom of the living God. I'm ready to go all in. I'm ready to start seeing things from a different reality than I've been formally receiving. Are you seeing yourself living in a house that's better than the place where you're in? Do you see yourself governing over things and people and situations where you once felt governed and run amok? Do you see yourself as the head and no longer as the tail? Do you see yourself free from bad credit? Do you see yourself with your bills more than paid? Do you see yourself meeting the needs of others beyond yourself where you were living hand to mouth at one time yourself? Do you see yourself feeding the homeless? Do you see yourself uh, uh, housing those without housing? Do you see yourself living in a reality where you are the boss 
and you're hiring others and giving others an opportunity that you never thought you would have for yourself, you're now granting to others. We need to start choosing this day. Make a decision this day. The reality that is your destiny as a citizen of the kingdom of the living God. I'm ready to go all in. How about you? And we're called as a body of believers, as disciples, to do this together, to move in the same direction that our teacher moved. He moved and the 12 moved with him. Wherever he went, they went. They learned whatever he said, they began to say. Whatever he was getting because of what he was seeing and believing, they began getting because they started seeing and believing what Jesus was seeing and believing. What motivated Peter to get out of the boat? Peter saw in Jesus, who he knew as, the, as rabbi, great teacher, good teacher. He had been walking with him for a couple of years. But Peter saw in Jesus' ability to walk on water he saw himself able to do it. That's why he got out of the boat. Jesus, if you tell me to come out there with you, I will come. In other words, Jesus, I see myself doing it now. Do you see me doing it now? <laughs> Jesus said, I sure do. Come on out here and walk on this water. Jesus is summoning us right now. Get out of the boat of your past hang-ups and hang-outs. Get out of the old perspective that governed everything you received because of what you believed and what you saw and what you didn't see. And come out here on the high waters in spite of it not looking like a friendly environment out here. Know that I've got you. I won't let you sink. I see you walking on water. I see you living in the supernatural. See yourself living in the supernatural. See yourself doing great exploits for God to glorify Him, not to bring attention to yourself. And guess what? As you begin to imagine yourself doing great exploits for God, you'll do great exploits for God. God bless you tonight. I want to thank you all for joining us for this latest segment of Mantle Matters. On next week, we've got a treat for you. We've got... Uh, Sister Denise Forbes will be uh, taking the mic and leading us on in our continuing journey with experiencing entrepreneurship from a kingdom perspective. But for now, mm -hmm. let us pray out, and we look forward to you all joining us tomorrow on our late, latest Perspective Matters prayer call, 6 a.m. Eastern Time, 5 a.m. Central Time. 4 a.m. Mountain Time and 3 a.m. Pacific Time. We're continuing to pray for those things that God is revealing to us through the Word. Choose this day whom you will serve. Choose your reality. Choose the reality that will be yours. This comes by making a decision. Some of us need to pray ourselves into that decision. Lord God, let there be no distraction from the decision I need to make to be all in, in serving you, that I would be given the ability to discern by way of your Holy Spirit in direct communication with mine, our spirits living together in this house of a body that you have given me mm. to be your blessed tabernacle, that I would see things from your perspective, no longer blind to the perspective of the very Spirit of God living in me. We've got to pray that in. For some of us, it's a fight. It's a battle. The last thing Satan wants you to do is to be able to see what God has prepared for you. That is where Satan's work is to separate, to steal, kill, and destroy your vision. The perspective that is God's for you. If Satan can distract you and deter you from seeing what God has for you, then he can keep you on a blind path to misery rather than to God's free path of living as a redeemed and free and powerful and rich citizen of his, of his heaven right here on this earth. Amen. I don't believe any of us got our wings, but guess what? We've got the spirit of the living God that can cause us to soar over every natural 
piece of opposition that's out there blocking you to your ultimate destiny in Christ Jesus. Let's pray out. Father God, we thank you. We praise you for this time together. We thank you for this word right out of Joshua chapter 24, verse 14 and 15. Lord God, we thank you that our reality comes by way of a choice. We have a choice in this thing. We have a choice in how we live and what we will and won't accept. God, we, when we accepted you as our Lord and our Savior, we accepted the king and your kingdom and all that it avails for us, all that it permits us to live as and to live with. Oh, God, to the extent that we've been separated from it because we couldn't see it. We couldn't see it for ourselves, so we couldn't have it for ourselves. Jesus, we thank you for the redemptive work of your cross and the work that you did when you hung your head, gave up your spirit, and your spirit went directly down into the pit of hell to do warfare against our chief enemy, the devil, and win for us our redemption. Oh, thank you, Lord. oh, Lord God, we thank and we praise you that we've got a brand new reality we can call into effect just by seeing things differently. Hmm. Lord God, I pray that you give each and every one who is on this call and those who are watching this by way of YouTube video after the fact. Lord God, give us the discernment. Awake, awaken the spirit that lives in us, that we might live according to our faith rather than according to our sight. Mm -hmm. For it is your spirit, your Holy Spirit in us that informs our faith. Mm -hmm. Lord God, we thank you that your word teaches us, teaches us that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And once we hear the word, we need to start seeing what the word says. Mm -hmm. Lord God, give us the ability to tune in with crystal clarity mm -hmm. what it is you've prepared oh. for us that we might see it in advance, even though we might be living in shackles. We might be living in pits. Lord God, our emergence from the shackles and the pits are based upon us seeing ourselves living as princes and princesses in your palace mm -hmm. right here on this Hallelujah. earth. We thank you and we praise you, God. What a great and loving God you are to give us such a word to cause us to be released mm -hmm. into the wealth of your kingdom. The riches of both heaven and earth are ours. Let us see yeah. with our mind's eyes with crystal clarity what it is we have because we have access to the king and your kingdom. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Mm. In Jesus' name it is that we pray. Amen. Amen oh, and okay. amen. No. Well, if you want to chop it up a little bit after we conclude this recording, stay on the line and join us for a few minutes, and we will have some time of koinonia together, all right? God bless you. We look forward to you all being on the prayer call tomorrow morning. And don't forget to join us this Thursday for Perspective Matters Online Bible Study, where we're going to delve mm. in a little deeper. We're going to be talking about living the supernatural life, living the supernatural life. Do not miss Thursday night, all right? God bless you. Love you in the Lord. Visualize mm -hmm. your victory. Go in peace and go in his power. God bless you. Amen, 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 amen. Rich teaching. Rich teaching. Hallelujah. Ooh, we. Um, yeah. I feel free. I, uh, <laughs> Amen. I feel free after that word. My, 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 yes, my. Yes, it's, it's good. Very wow. liberating. Um, mm -hmm. Just on time. You know, just really, really on time. It's, it's, thank you. Thank you so much, Pastor. Thank you. Thank so God. Much. I ain't got nothing but what he gives me. So um, glory be to God. Glory be to God. Yeah, for being a yielded vessel, it does take that. It takes to hear, to receive from the Holy Spirit, and then to deliver, and then, and then to totally get out of the way and be the yielded vessel that will deliver it to his people. Mm. And so for that, we give God thanks for your surrender and submission. Yes, Lord. And uh, what a timely word it is um, mm -hmm. and the meat of the word it's, that's, that's a walk on water confirming kind of word mm -hmm. that is very apropos 
Mm-hmm. This is the literal and the practical. You know, it's 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 one thing to in theory study it, but it's an entirely different thing to walk that out oh, and have it is. a practical word that mm-hmm. can apply to where yeah. we are on right. on, yeah. on on whatever level, whatever our situations and circumstances. That is a rhema word applicable to it, and so yeah, uh, yeah thank you. Amen, amen. It's amazing what God gives us power over. You know, a lot of us think that we're powerless where our reality is concerned. No, we're not. No, we're Mm -hmm. not. We have the ability to call into existence what does not exist. And the only way you can call it in is by seeing it in first. You've got to be Mm -hmm. able to see it. And when a thought enters our mind that is in conflict with the reality that God says that you are, you're blessed. Blessed to be what? To be fruitful, to multiply, to Mm -hmm. fill the earth, to subdue it and have dominion. And your circumstances are suggesting something opposite of that. Guess what? You could say, you know what? Thought, you came out of hell, go back to the hell that you came from. I'm calling in a whole new thought and a whole new reality. That's what... That's what the writer Paul meant when he said, you know, renew our minds with the word of God. (laughs) That that is the purpose for the word, to really just uh, cleanse our thinking and renew our minds with the thinking of heaven. That's right. That's exactly right. Bringing thoughts of heaven right to this earth so that heaven can manifest itself right Mm -hmm. here through our lives. So taking Mm -hmm. captive... Taking captive those there thoughts. You know, one of my yeah. one of my favorite scriptures during this yeah. time of of combating, and, it, and it's not a bad thing, is um, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing mm-hmm. into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. There it is. That is the word that I use to defeat those thoughts that you're talking about, and. Exactly. Um, for as much throughout the course of the day, particularly when you're on the incline to the high places, and you know all of us be pressing toward the mark of the high price. But when you're in that incline, and 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 hind feet on high places, and all of that is is in effect, yeah, definitely those those thoughts are going to come because those principalities and powers and rulers of darkness don't want you to continue that incline. And exactly. so, you know, putting mm-hmm. them under our feet, using the word to um, make sure that all of the invisible realm, particularly mm-hmm. that which is against us, understands we know who we are. We, we know mm-hmm. who we are. I might be on a new cliff. I might be in a new <laughs> zone. But guess what? I belong here. I, I belong yeah. here, so you might as well get mm-hmm. used to it. I got mm-hmm. one better for you. I belong where I'm going. Cause I, guess it, it, I belong yeah. where I'm going. I, that, that's why I'm going. <laughs> I'm not staying here. Uh, it, you see, we get caught I'm up. I'm in movement. There uh-huh. you go. We get caught up in the journey, and we get caught up into the now that surrounds us, whereas that. we're walking my way through yeah. the valley. We're, mm-hmm. It's the drudgery mm-hmm. and the, tr- the, 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 the trudging up the backside of the mountain. Mm-hmm. 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 And we get stuck on the fact that number one is a mountain. Mm-hmm. Number two is the back side, the wrong side of the mountain. Mm-hmm. And it's drudgery climbing that daggone mountain. Yeah, 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 yeah. But remember mm-hmm. where it is I'm going. I'm going to the That's top the thing. of the mountain. I'm going to the have, peak, the summit. We can't have the mind of Christ and his perspective on it. We yeah. lose sight of that. And it's yeah. always yeah. so critical to keep that ever before us. Right, before right. What he's revealed, what he's promised, mm-hmm. where you're mm-hmm. at, that, that's just mm-hmm. so critical. Yeah, well, mm-hmm. you know, what? That, that's why I, I could see even now as I'm speaking of it, the thrill that comes to people who are mountain climbers. And mountain climbing mm-hmm. has never been my thing. But mm-hmm. I can see now where that, given all that you have to go through, the obstacles to climb up, to Mount Everest mm-hmm. at the risk of your own life, mm-hmm. going through cold, absence of oxygen. You know, nothing grows up there. Right. But to get to finally the summit and say, I did it, mm-hmm. and yet going back down, uh, that, that, that's easy compared to the climb up. 
Mm-hmm, true. You know, but it's the climbing <laughs> up. What what keeps you doing that? Mm-hmm. Reaching the top. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Reaching the summit. Who would put their bodies as well as their spirits through such adverse mm-hmm. conditions voluntarily? I mean, people don't have to do this. They volunteer to climb Mount Everest at risk mm-hmm. of their own life. You know how many people have died trying to make that trek? Just to say that they did it. They've been wow. at the summit. They've been yeah, at the mountaintop. True that. Wow. <laughs> and, and that's what life is like. Mm-hmm. That's what life is like. And that's especially what kingdom life is about. Because guess what? The very things that we use, like, uh, Sister Denise, you, you're saying, um, take captive um, your, your, your thoughts. And that is the reason why God allows us to go through these trials is that we would build the faith muscles to be able That's to it. take right captive right. Every, exactly. thought, mm-hmm. every thought. All right? And until we get and begin to really take captive every thought, we're going to continue to have to practice until we're good at it. <laughs> That's mm-hmm. right. That's so right. you know what? Mm-hmm. I want to learn my lesson and pass the class so I can get out of that one and God will give me the next one. <laughs> you sound like me. <laughs> I don't want to keep repeating the same class over and over and over That's again. That's exactly what I have been saying to my yeah. friends in the recent days. I'm like, look. I need you to understand, I don't care what it looks like, but I'm not coming back this way again. So I'm going to do Thank what you. I have to do to pass this because I'm move. Oh, no, I promise you that those are exactly my yeah. words. Yeah, yeah. It's like, all right, taking, taking calculus was, was, was enough once by itself. I ain't trying to do calculus again. Oh, no. <laughs> You know? so, so look, I'm like, you know what? Whatever, whatever I have to do to pass this with flying mm-hmm. colors, guess what? Mm-hmm. I so no. I'm <laughs> like, really? I'm like, oh, I'm very serious. That's <laughs> I'm very serious. And in God's university of adversity, there is no auditing the class. No, you're gonna get no, a grade right. one way or the other. That's you can't right. audit it. No, you got to sit there and take the ooh, exam. Ooh, ooh, ooh. You got to take the the test yeah. or retake the class. Your choice. <laughs> It's been real rich, you guys. I'm going to join you right. this morning on the call. God bless you. I love you guys. Everybody. This was really rich. Thank you so much. Amen. Amen. God bless y'all. We'll see y'all tomorrow morning on the prayer call. God bless.